Aaron and Melissa here for True Stream Media. Hey everybody, we got a big problem. This whole thing with the herbicides is mounting. This is... I never even thought about this until I read this headline. Roundup weed killer found in 75% of air and rain samples, according to a new government study. The USGS just got done doing a survey of pesticides in the air and rain in the state of Mississippi, and they compared 1995 to 2007, and they found out that Roundup herbicide, aka glyphosate, and its still toxic degradation byproduct AMPA were found in over 75% of the air and rain samples tested in Mississippi in 2007. They're just now releasing this. Of course, that was seven years ago. But, wow, I guess people are just breathing toxic clouds of glyphosate. It's like we're walking around in a toxic cloud, yeah, exactly. It says glyphosate was the predominant new herbicide detected in both air and rain. 86% of air samples had glyphosate. 77% of rain samples in 2007 had this glyphosate in there. And he also mentions here that if the estimates here about how many... Uh, kilograms of glyphosate were applied statewide in 2007 versus 1995, it reveals an 18-fold increase in glyphosate concentrations in the air and water samples in, a tw in that 12-year period. And the reason it goes back to 1995 is that's when the first Roundup Ready genetically modified seed varieties began to get approved for soy and for corn and then other crops, and they started to be very widely used. And because they're resistant to Roundup, the glyphosate herbicide, farmers began basically dousing crops in them and using them multiple times during the growing season. And as a result, uh, has been the rise of super weeds. And now the super weeds are resistant to the, the herbicide, so they're using even more to try to combat them. And now that even that's not working, they're turning to other pesticides to use in addition to the Monsanto Roundup, and they've been using so much of this stuff all across the U.S. and all over the globe that we're now breathing it and it's in our water. Exactly. They did a study here that started in 1996, I believe, from 96 to 2011, just looking at that 16-year period of, of how much herbicide was used and pesticides were used, and they found out that there was a 527 million pound increase in herbicide use in the United States between 1996 and 2011. Okay, and then if you go on to the conclusions, it says that if the new genetically engineered forms of corn and soybeans tolerant of 2,4-D, so Agent Orange basically, if those are approved, it will drive herbicide use up another 50%. Well, guess what? That actually just got done happening. So this was up on our website, written by Daisy Luther, the organic prepper. She was talking about this. The USDA has approved the new 2,4-D genetically modified crops. So there you go. And that was an ingredient in Agent Orange that harmed many, many people in the Vietnam War, used as a defoliant. And again, they're doing that because they're layering or stacking the pesticides to try to deal with these weeds. This is a genetically modified foods problem because we've accepted so many GMOs in this world and comes with a very heavy dose of pesticide. Very heavy. Exactly. And this stuff, I mean, we've written about it extensively at True Stream Media. This, glyphosate causes all kinds of horrible health effects. It wrecks the healthy gut bacteria, which we all know is a huge, very important factor in your immune system. And so when you think about all of these allergies and autoimmune disorders that are off the charts in this country, now think about the fact that we're breathing glyphosate and how it wrecks your gut bacteria, how you know, all you have to do is read the side of a Roundup bottle to know the, all the warnings that are on there and what it does to people. And, I mean, it just it's, it's a full spectrum of... Uh, of diseases and disorders that glyphosate can cause. It says here it triggers health problems including debilitating diseases like gastrointestinal disorders, diabetes, heart disease, obesity, and Alzheimer's disease. And now a new study is coming out to suggest that yes, Roundup causes gluten intolerance. Remember gluten intolerance? The thing that was never even an issue for hardly anyone even just 20 years ago and now there are whole entire grocery aisles dedicated just to gluten-free foods because so many people are getting sick eating gluten. Well, apparently according to a new study, Monsanto Roundup causes gluten intolerance. It causes the issues that you see in people who have celiac disease. 
So this is crazy. And on top of that, apparently the gluten industry, I mean, they're making money on the way up, selling all the Roundup, and they're making it on the way down, selling billions of dollars worth of gluten-free foods. This is a $4.2 billion market, the gluten-free market. So they don't really have any incentive to fix this problem. And I get that Mississippi is sitting right on the Mississippi River, so you have all the runoff coming down from all the states that line up with that up and down the country. But I would wager to bet that you would find similar levels of glyphosate in other states. That's just where they did the states. testing. They use this stuff everywhere. Exactly. And this is seven years ago. Can you imagine how much it's gone up since then? And Jeffrey M. Smith at the Institute for Responsible Technology has been all over this issue pretty much from the beginning. He's put out the comprehensive book, Genetic Roulette, and is filled with study after study showing that these GM foods have major risks, and so does the glyphosate. They try to debunk it, but look, it's, it's proving true, and now we're breathing this stuff.